Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and today we're having a second look at Luminar Neo. Now we're having this second look because since its release we have now received version 1.0.5. Now amongst the improvements is a number of tweaks to stability and performance but also a few brand new features that were sorely lacking in the original release. So let's begin this tour with the catalogue screen and here is just an opportunity to view all the different photos that you have in your folders and albums. Double clicking on any given folder will bring it up onto the view screen and here we can sort of bounce from one photo to the next. Clicking on any image gives us the opportunity to zoom into the image and check sharpness and of course you can pan around the image as well. Now returning to the catalog screen, the options you have, we can right click and we can set a flag, we can mark photo as favorite, rejected or unmarked, or we can grab the image and sort of drag it into one of the albums you've created. For example, you might create an album for your holiday to Greece or Christmas, etc. But aside from that, uh, photo management is rather basic in Luminar Neo. We have the opportunity to mark, add, add albums, but what we can't do, we can't tag with keywords, we can't search on keywords, uh, nor do we have access to contemporary features such as uh, geotagging and face recognition. If that sounds like something you need, I recommend you try ACDC Ultimate. Anyway, one of the big sort of appeals of these products is the presets. Now, presets are absolutely fantastic if you don't know anything about photo editing, uh, because a preset gives you a completely processed photo in a single click. Now, there's all kinds of presets, roughly around 70 at last count, each giving sort of their own look. And really the best way to sort of find out which ones you like is just simply to click on them and try it. You can mark any preset that you find you like to use more often or not as your favorite. Uh, but if you can't decide, Luminar Neo also helps you out a little bit by assessing the photo and recommending the presets it thinks will best suit your photo. So for example, here we have easy landscapes, artistic and scenery. And each of these collections usually has between five and six different presets within. If this isn't enough, enough presets for you, you have the option to buy additional presets from Skyland Software. But you can also now, uh, new to this version, create your own presets. So this is simply the case when you um, make your own adjustments to the photo, you like those adjustments, you want to save them, and now you can, and then you can apply those saved adjustments as a preset to any future edit that you do. Now, from this point, we can jump onto the edit screen and we can take those adjustments with us onto the edit screen and add a few final touches. Alternatively, we can go to actions and we can revert the whole photo back to its original state and start from scratch. Now, one of the things I recommend Luminar Neo for is because you don't need to know anything about photo editing to edit a photo. For example, Enhance AI gives us the ability to sort of improve and enhance the photo all round simply by dragging a slider to the right. And you just simply stop at the point you think is enough is enough. The Sky Enhancer, because Luminar Neo is, uh, uses artificial intelligence, it can view the photo a little like you and I can. So it knows that's the sky. And if we move the sky enhancer, it will automatically adjust the sky without affecting any of the, the remainder of the image. We have the ability to add a bit of structure, which is a little bit like clarity in other photo editors. So this is it tiled up to 100. But in reality, we're gonna be a bit more discreet than that. And we can add a little boost as well. Now, those two adjustments alone might be enough for your needs. We can do a bit of sharpening. The landscape option has a few nice features like golden hour glow and a foliage enhancer 
those more greeny landscapes. And I always like to add a little bit of MIG netting as well. However, one of the main appeals of Luminar products is its super AI powered trickery. So sky selection, uh, sky AI replacement tool is a great place to start. And here we can choose from a number of skies included and simply drop in a brand new sky, just like that. If you don't like that sky, there's plenty more to choose from. Now, for the most part, the skies can slot in quite perfectly. But if you end up with a few little issues, you've got various tools in which you can sort of realign and close the gaps between your new sky and your foreground. Uh, one of the clever things that it does as well is depending on the sky you use, it will relight the remainder of the scene. So if we go from sort of a bright sunrise to an overcast, it will alter the lighting. And in those applicable cases, it also adds the reflections as well. So if there's reflections on the ground, it will reflect the new sky on those reflections. It's all very clever stuff. And as you can see, there's plenty of variety to choose from. But it's not just sky replacement. We've got some nice tricks other than that. The Relight AI is great. Uh, we have sun, sunny, sun rays, so we can add all kinds of little trickery to sort of overcome any limits of our lenses. You can really go over top with this. Uh, dramatic, simply makes the photo more dramatic. And that's another thing I like about the Luminar products is that it, they don't rely on sort of photo editor terminology. If you want your photo to be more dramatic, you just go to the dramatic slider and off you wear. Now, moving on a little bit, the other feature worth mentioning is the portrait trick. So this is a picture of me. It's a very bad picture of me taken with my front facing smartphone camera. And what we're going to do is we're going to see just how much better we can make it with Luminar Neo. So I'm going to begin with portrait bokeh. And this is a background blur tool. So the problem with most smartphones is that the lenses aren't sufficient to blur the background. So with this, we add the effect digitally. All right, so that's just starting to look a bit better. And then what I'm gonna do is shrink the depth as well. I'm gonna really max this out. And then a little bit of highlight glow. And already there we can see an absolute huge difference in our portrait. No skills required. We've also got face AI. So this is simply about face sort of lighting and relighting. You can see here, this one's actually not so badly lit. I don't really need that. I can slim my face. I'm quite happy with my face, believe it or not. We can sort of, enhance my eyes, I can darken my eyebrows, I can remove dark circles as you can see there. And I can improve my eyebrows. Although I've got to admit, I've never stood in a mirror and wanted to improve my eyebrows. And mouth, if I was showing a bit of teeth, there's a teeth whitener and I can also make my lips redder, but you'll have to use your imagination on that one. Skin AI is just there to sort of smooth away the imperfections. So there's a very artificial look, but there's a happy medium, which gives us just enough imperfection to be human, but also enough to sort of overcome any harsh light that sort of paints us in an unflattering way. Shine removal, if you've ever been a bit sweaty and the light shining off your face in the photo, we can kind of remove that uh, as well as any other unflattering light. And skin defects removal, bit hit and miss, but what this can do is it can remove moles, spots, scars, scratches, and so forth. It's just a click of the box, click it, see if it works for you. And finally, not relevant to this photo, but we have uh, the ability to sort of slim and enlarge bodies. Um, not just for people conscious about the weight, but it's also a great tool to um, compensate for wide angle distortion as in the lens makes you look bigger than you actually are. Now, once you've made all your adjustments, as I was saying before, we have the ability to save it as a preset. So my presets, I can just do me. 
And now I can apply that preset to all future photos. Another neat way of adjusting your photos. So if we have a look at this photo here, this photo, I've already done the adjustment and it was taken on the same day as all of these. Now I don't want to have to do what I did there to all of these photos. So instead I can click on here, hold control key down, right click adjustments, sync adjustments, and that will replicate the exact same adjustments I did on this photo to these two photos. And now my work is done. So that's Luminar Neo. I'm very impressed with the product. The upsides is it makes it incredibly easy to do an awful lot. And you really don't need to know much about photo editing to get the best out of your photos. The downside is it's com compared to sort of more traditional, more complex photo editor, it is doing more thinking and it is a little bit more slower. So that's the trade off that you need to decide what to make, uh, whether it's worth making. To help you decide that, you can try Luminar Neo absolutely free of charge, no credit card required, and the description and link for that is below this video. But anyway, I hope you found that useful. Luminar Neo is better than ever. I very much recommend it. If you've already bought Luminar Neo, version 1.0.5 is a free update, so help yourself. If you're trying or buying Luminar Neo today, that's the version you're going to get. So no problems. Anyway, hope that was useful. My name is Richard from Silent Peak and I wish you a very good day. Bye bye.